everyone. Uh, I'm going to do a video today about ha reading tablature. Uh, I know some some of you guys probably struggle with understanding what all these lines and numbers mean, and especially some of the some of the symbols that you come across on these these tabs. It can be quite confusing if you're new to it. Uh, but the basis of it is really like painting by numbers. It's, it can be as easy as that. It tells you exactly what to play and where to play it. So it's a, it's a really useful resource to use. Um, especially when you're, you're first starting out. So I use ultimateguitar.com. Um, I have a pro account, so that means all the all the features work. I can play this tab back to myself so that I can hear how it's supposed to sound. I don't have to work out the rhythm parts. I can slow it down. I can uh, use a metronome. I can loop parts. I can have this fretboard up if I want. Um, I can change the pitch. So if I'm playing a song that's in E-flat tuning, I can go plus one on the pitch and then it's, it, it will you know work as standard tuning uh, and lots of different features like that. However, you don't have to sign up to the pro version uh, to, to get a benefit from from these tabs or the, you know, the massive library of tabs that this website has. Um, so don't feel like you, you know, you need to uh, be spending money to, to be able to read this sort of stuff. Uh, so let's have a look at this tab in particular. Uh, we may sort of switch out and you know have a look at a few others, uh, different songs, just to sort of vary things a bit, and uh, so we can see some you know different aspects of the tablature. <clears throat> so first up, we've got the title "Supermassive Black Hole." Official tab means that that's been created by the UltimateGuitar.com team. Uh, the website does have lots of user generated tabs so people that are members of the site will post up their interpretation of a song um, quite often in this same format to use uh, guitar pro uh, uh, app uh, which you can use on a desktop or on a mac whatever to um, generate your tabs which will then play along like these because as i say this one will play um, but the ultimate guitar official tabs are generally generally pretty good uh i don't i've not come across many that seem to be far off so the you know i tend to try and find those ones if i'm going to use a tab so at the top here it tells us the tuning for this particular song which is also useful you know i try and encourage everybody to try and use their ears and learn songs by ear which is an essential skill to try and develop um you know it really really is really good to to be able to listen to a song and figure it out and it's very rewarding as well however a lot of the music especially with the rock genres and heavy metal genres of modern eras um, can use some strange and odd tunings uh, and some very low tunings quite often once you get used to hearing it you can tell the guitar's tuned down especially if it's really low um, but sometimes if it's only a little bit if it's a half step so e flat or whatever or drop d Sometimes it can be difficult to to hear that and tell that the you know that the, the guitars have been tuned down. So this is quite a useful feature. You could look on there and say, oh, okay, so standard tuning, that's okay, I'm good to go. I don't need to change the guitar's tuning. Also, the key is E minor. Uh, the fact that it's E minor doesn't make any difference, but the fact that it tells you the key is quite useful because if you've got a good understanding of how keys work and, and you know, relationships of chords and, and what scales you can use within that key, then you can start to get to grips with the song a lot quicker because you'll be able to predict where it's going to go. And certainly as you listen to the song, you'll know what options you've got to use in terms of chords and melodies and, and riffs and all that kind of thing. Next up, we've got uh, the tempo. So this uh, is a sort of standard notation a quarter note equals 120 so that's telling us that each each quarter note is worth 120 meets beats per minute so if you were to set your metronome up to practice along and you wanted to do it at full speed you'd want to set it to 120 beats per minute uh, and then that way you could practice without the record or whatever but just by yourself so if you were isolating a part that you were having difficulty with um, you'd know that you were you know you could work up to 120 beats per minute and you would know then that you had got it at full speed so next we have some more numbers this four four you'll see a lot uh this is a pretty common time signature so this is, this is telling us what the time signature is for this piece of music 
And the time signature for this piece of music is uh, going to be four quarter notes per bar. So a bar or a measure of music, as it's often called, is one of these sections. And this light, vertical line here is the bar line. That tells us when the, that measure or that bar of music ends. So in, within this measure, uh, the, the notes that are being played have to equal 4-4 four, four, or, or add up to 4-4. Four, four. So in its simplest terms, we can look at it in a few ways. Basically, you could have four quarter notes. Uh, and that would be a note on every beat. Um, you could have two half notes. So the bigger the note, the less of them there are. Uh, or you could have one whole note. Going the other way, if you had, if you were playing eighth notes, you would half the time that they're played for. So for every beat, you'd play two notes. Sixteenth notes for every beat, you'd play four notes. And you'll see this. It, I'll try and find some examples, uh, and you, you'll be able to see because there's some visual cues to tell you what's you know what's going on with these notes. So the horizontal lines, these represent our strings, and an easy way to kind of remember. Uh, which is which, is to imagine that the lowest uh, line is the lowest note on your guitar or the lowest string, so the low E, the thickest one, and the highest or the, the top line is the highest note, so the high E, and then the rest will fall in between, so it's you have your E, A, D, G, B, E, so the thickest strings down to the thinnest strings. Technically speaking, it's supposed to represent looking down on your guitar from above, but to be honest, I've never really kind of got that concept it doesn't make a lot of sense to me as you can see this fretboard um diagram is, is doing the same thing um i mean to me that's the wrong way around because i'm left-handed but if i if i was looking at my guitar from above i suppose that is kind of how it would look uh, but even so uh, i don't i don't find that a particularly useful way of looking at it but you know it is what it is and that's the way it's always been laid out so as long as you remember the bottom one is the bottom is the thickest string the top one is the thinnest string and everything falls in between so then we move on to the numbers the numbers as you can see dotted about on these lines uh, tell us what fret to play so zero would mean we play zero frets no frets at all we would just play that string open so that would just be in this case an open e string and then up here we've got a five on the D on the D string. So we'd go to fret five on the D string and press down there and play that note there. So this is quite quite a straightforward little riff on uh, to begin with on here. We're just playing an open E. And then this is a rest. That means we don't play anything. And we're playing a fret five. And this line here means that we let that fret five note ring on to the value of the note we've played. Uh, plucked and then the value of the next beat here look so we've got one and two and three and four and <clears throat> the reason i'm counting in ands one and two and three and four and is because most of these notes are eighth notes so if you wanted to count out a, a measure of music a bar of music like this it's usually best to kind of go to the lowest uh, sort of subdivision so that you you know don't get confused even though I've got a, a quarter note at the beginning here I'm going one I've got a rest which is an eighth note rest and two and three and four and so the and of two isn't shown but we can see that this is an eighth note because it's got a little tail on it and uh, we know that that tie means that that's being held for the and of the two and the beat of three so one and then pluck fret five, two and three, and then pluck the open E string again on the on the and of three. Then a rest, and then pluck that open again on the and of four. So these are really useful. They tell us how the rhythm works. You you can fit without listening to the song at all, you could figure out how to how to play this section just by counting these uh, note values and rests. Okay, so moving down, let's see if we can find uh, some more uh, technical descriptions that we need to understand. Uh, so here we go. 
got a couple here. So again, this, this riff is carrying on, pretty repetitive to start with. And they're all single notes, so we've not come across any chords yet. But we've got this here, this little X on the, on the low E string. That simply means that you're not fretting any notes, but you are resting your fingers across that string or finger across that string, so that it kind of makes a muted sound. So it's just do like a click type sound as you as you hit that string and it's more of an accent type note really uh, and, a, and a sort of a style stylization of, of the playing of that particular player and a lot of players use it uh, you know within their playing to add dynamics to their playing next up we've got uh, this fret 7 on the D string and then an arrow curving up with a half written above it and then curving back down again so what this is telling us is we're going to bend this note half a step. So we're going to bend it equivalent to one fret. So if I were to play fret seven and then fret eight, fret eight would be the target note. So fret seven, I would bend it a half step so that it matched the pitch of fret eight on that particular string. And then this is showing me that I'm then releasing that bend. So it's bending up and then bending back down again. And then we've got a series of notes all linked together with these little lines. So don't confuse these with these tie bars. This is telling us that we're holding a note over a period of time. Whereas this is telling us that we're, we're doing a technique called hammering on and pulling off. A lot of books you might, if you've got books with tabs and you might see that they have either a H or a P over the top of them as well to, to sort of help you understand that it's a hammer on and a pull off. But I guess for simplicity on these web-based tabs, we just get these little lines that tie them all together and I can see that I'm going from five to seven so I'd have to hammer onto that note and from seven back to five so I'd have to pull off again. The rhythm uh, sort of the rhythm um, symbols underneath are showing us that that's very quick so as you can see before we've had these eighth notes where it's two sticks joined together by a bar here we've got three sticks joined together by two bars so that's a, a sixteenth note and then this means it's a triplet so it'll be a that be a beat four four triplet and then we've got an extra eighth note on the end so in fact it might be part of uh, beat three actually so here we've got a solid bar or measure of all the same note values so as you can see, we've got all these kind of U-shaped symbols underneath that are telling us how long to play each note. Here, this one's just a single stick. That just tells us that's a quarter note. That represents a quarter note. So if there was a bar of quarter notes, there'd be four of those. There'd be one, two, three, four. In here, as you can see, there's four pairs. So remember I said eighth notes are worth half the time value of a quarter note. So for every beat, you play two notes. So quite handily with this particular uh, website, they group the eighth notes into pairs. So that's one beat, two beats, three beats, four beats. And if you were going to count along, which I recommend you do just to sort of get used to, you know, especially with things like this, where you're going to be changing strings and notes mid mid bar. It's not all just, it's not just the same note all the way across the bar. You'd go one and two and three and four and. So I know that I play two open E strings, one and, and then on the beat two, I go to fret five on the D, then the and of beat two, open E string, open E string, beat three, and of beat three is a, is a G power chord, and then two more G power chords for the beat of four. So you can sort of, it's really easy, to, I find, to visualize that each of, each of these pairs equals a beat, and then you just break those down into the individual count so one and two and three and four and also i said this is a g power chord so the stacked numbers if there's if they're vertically stacked like this and you can be you can have you know numbers stacked on top of each other right across all these strings if you play, if it's showing a bar chord of some description i know this is a power chord it's a it's a it's quite handy it's a third it's a root and a fifth so that five almost tells me that's a fifth, but that, is, that isn't what that means. That's just telling me to play, play fret five on um, the A string. But I know fret three, uh, low E, and fret five on the A string will give me a, a, a G power chord. 
Likewise up here, we've got five and seven. That'll give me an A power chord. Let's see if we can find some more complex chords later on. So again, the the you know the rhythm part, uh, sorry, the, the the riffs and whatnot seem to follow a pretty sort of consistent pattern. So I look on one, a couple of the other guitar parts. So we got a solo guitar, rhythm guitar. Doesn't seem to be many mass, you know, big chords uh, in this song, um, which is kind of nice if you're you know new to playing big chords, especially the big bar chords. So let's have a look on the solo. We've got a guitar solo here. So we've got a few things going on here. Um, 9 to 14 is a big slide. So that, that, that kind of diagonal line there means that you, you're going to pluck fret 9 on the D string and slide up to 14. And this means we're not going to pluck fret 14 when we get there. And then on 14 on the G string, we've got these half tone bends again, or half a step bends. And then this is a quarter step bend. So a quarter bend is quite small. There is, obviously, it's, it's, it's the smallest um, distance between two notes on a guitar is one fret or, so, or a half a tone. So a, a half a tone, there isn't, there isn't anything smaller than that to reference. Uh, so a quarter note is literally almost like a little curl of the string, uh, a little accent. Um, not as, you, know, you don't want to go up as high as half, you know, half a step. Uh, you just want to give that a tiny little push. And then this is all hammer-ons and pull-offs because these are all linked together like they are. So you can see in this bar, we've got four little groups of four notes. So if you remember before, I was talking about the triplets. They have <coughs> they had uh, two bars joining them together. So that's meaning they're 16th notes and there's four counts per beat so if you wanted to count all those uh up you would count one and e that uh, one e and a, sorry two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. and that's how you would know where you are in the in the in the beat oh sorry in the bar so so far we've had quarter notes eighth notes and sixteenth notes and a sixteenth note triplet so a triplet, you would count one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, just yeah, so the way you would count triplets. I think I have done a video about counting rhythm, so but just to sort of recap. Right, let me go and find a song that's got more chords in it. So we can just have a look at some tabs with chords on. I know this one's got a lot of chords in it. Here we go. So <clears throat> As we can see, all the all the notes are stacked on top of each other, and that tells us that we're playing a chord. If the if the notes are kind of individually sort of spaced out, that's obviously a single note run. But in this case, they're all stacked up. So if I was to play an open D, uh, fret two on the G, fret three on the B, fret two on the high E, I would have a D chord. And again, we've got these these tie bars, tie lines, um, that tell us that this chord rings on for more than one beat or for a, that for more than the, the original note value so it's it's going across two beats there also we've got eighth note uh rhythm markers on the bottom here so one and two and three and four and so in this case we're going we're going to strum our d chord on one and two and let it ring for three and then start strumming again on the and of three four and you'll also notice this d chord we have a, a little shuffling note pattern going on so it's a d chord and then we're adding our third finger on the high e string if you're familiar with the crazy little thing called love song you'll you'll recognize where, where that is so again lots of chords on this one so it's D, 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 so we're into the verse, D, so that, you know, mostly eighth note strumming pattern, but we again, remember we've got that, we're holding that one there over over that beat uh, to, to create the rhythm. So if you know how to count this and understand that this means you don't strum on this third beat, you start strumming on the and of three, uh, you'll, you'll get that strumming pattern down straight away. Uh, 
there's a couple of quarter notes in that one so you can see how this bar split up so we've got two quarter notes because again it's the same it's four four time signature so we can either have four of these single notes or four double double uh eighth notes and in this one we've got two of each we've got one two three and four and that would be how you'd count that there were, if there's a lot going on in the bar sometimes it's like i said before i think we it's as well to count the, the smallest uh subdivision even if it's a quarter note so you'd probably go one and two and three and four and just so that you kind of keep in the in like sort of rhythm of counting if you like rather than going one two three and four i mean you could count it like that but you know whatever you find easiest really uh so big chords as i was saying before this here look we, we're playing fret three on the uh, uh low e fret two on the uh, a an open d string an open g string and fret three on the b string so that i know from experience that's a g chord same here we moved uh, the top finger down top two fingers down a string and then we're playing a on the th uh, fret three d on fret two open on the g three on uh the b string that gives us a c add nine chord so i mean you could go through a tab like this and then just write above each of these sections you know if you printed it off what the chords are uh, so if you know the chords already at a glance you can then kind of just follow it through so there we go lots more lots more chords this was mostly chord based so like the previous song was very uh riff based this one's um much more chord based uh queens you know classic sort of band that used a lot of chords and stuff but they still also used riffs so so here we have some rests this is a, a dotted half note rest so a dotted note uh means it's worth 50 percent more than its original value so in this case it's worth three beats so a half note would be worth two beats so half of that again would be one and that makes it three beats so we hit this uh f chord at the beginning of the bar and beat one and then stop and count two three four and then you've got an eighth note uh, sorry that no, quarter note thrust there and then you're you're back in um and these are triplet so it'll be one triplet two triplet uh you probably wouldn't call that sorry three four that's not triplet uh, and so on these are triplet parts here look one triplet two triplet that fills the bar up a nice little eighth note run more of the same uh, let's have a look at the guitar solo because there'll be a few symbols in there we may not have seen already uh so we've got full bends this time in this one so that we're bending that up a whole step or so that's two frets so if i was going to figure out what pitch i needed to get that note to i'd play fret 15 on the b string and that would be the pitch I'm trying to hit. So then I'll go back to fret 13 and bend that string until it matches what fret 15 sounds like. Uh, then this is a 16th note rest, this little little line with two tails. So it kind of matches, you know, these rhythm uh, symbols. So one little tail would be an eighth note, two little tails. We've got anything that shows that. So two little tails would be the 16th note. So the rests uh, follow a similar line. This uh, fret 13, uh, full bend, straight up. So this is quite a quite a steady bend, because it sort of shows you with the way the uh, the arrow slowly goes up. This one would be straight up, and then this one is straight up and then release. Again, we've got tie bars and whatnot here, so that's showing us that uh, we're holding that over uh, a count of the measure. So uh, this is the other one I was thinking of, the squiggly line. What does that mean? Well, that's vibrato. So that's when we play our note, and then we just bend it and release it very sort of like subtly in some cases. Sometimes it's quite aggressive and, and wide, um, but it's repeated over and over. So you bend, release, bend, release, bend, release, and that gives you that sort of slightly wobbly sound that we call vibrato. You might some find with some tabs it'll be there'll be two options uh you'll see 
like this when it's just quite small and, and tight and you might see another version of it where it's very very wide uh, so it kind of gives an indication of how aggressive the vibrato is so we've got lots of little triplet runs in here like these one triplet so there's one and two triplet three and rest for four and uh, I don't know if we cover these but the lines are these diagonal lines mean you slide so I'm sliding I'm making that sound like I'm sliding from 12, uh, 11 to 12, sorry. More bend and release, half step, more vibrato, more triplets. These are eighth note triplets. Sliding down there, look. These are little subtleties that make the song you're playing, when you know, once you've got to grips with the, with the actual song, um, if you start kind of adding all these subtleties in, it's, it really rounds the sound out and makes it you know, sound like a polished piece long piece of vibrato there and I think that is about everything uh, there are other symbols you'd come across um, you you may find uh, rather than trying digging up another tab you may find little uh, sort of indications above some of these notes to tell you to do certain techniques so for example an nh would mean natural harmonic so i did a video recently on the page about harmonics so that's the one where you rest like you just rest your finger lightly over the, a particular fret and then pluck and pull your finger away and that gives you a natural harmonic uh, or ph uh, is a pinch harmonic or it might be ah is an artificial harmonic um, depends on who's writing the tab and their sort of definition of those two things a pinch harmonic is where again like i showed in the video you dig the pick in and use the edge of your thumb to brush the note as you just as you pick it and that creates a a, a pinch harmonic uh, an artificial harmonic is where you would play the strip play the note so say for instance we play in fret three on the g string you would then tap just gently above fret 15 on the g string uh, to create uh, an artificial harmonic um, that's uh, it's quite a tricky technique to do that one but uh, it, it does sound effective um, when, when you when you can master it so that that's uh, a couple of other sort of things to bear in mind that you may come across on tabs but the main point is that you understand what these lines mean and what the numbers mean all the other bits are kind of uh, you know frills uh, for sort of dressing up the song and all the rest of it once you've sort of mastered what to play and where to play it you can then start adding in these other bits it's useful to know where the bends are and whatnot because this uh let's have a look find a full note a full note bend uh takes you to the to another note uh, so does half notes to be fair um so that doesn't display fret, you know playing fret 15 but because you're bending it up a full tone you are going to fret 15 so unless you know what that is you're going to miss certain notes out so a full you know it's, un, it's important to understand what a full note and a half note uh, bend is because uh, they are quite integral to to some of the sound you know some of the sort of phrasings uh i think that's uh, pretty much it um like i say i wanted to do this so that there's a reference point so at the beginning of the video we've got the sort of description of what all the basic stuff is so you can at least get started following tabs through uh, like I say, we do use them quite a bit. This is a good reference. It's really, really easy to follow uh, because it is literally telling you where to play and on what string to play. But the skill comes in when you start to understand these rhythm uh, diagrams uh, and all the little symbols so that you can look at that piece of music and, and go, right, I can count this one and two, three and four. And, and you can play that rhythm without having to listen to the record. Excellent. Right. I will see you all soon. Uh, this is a little bonus video. I just thought, you know, we should probably put something up about this kind of thing. Uh, I've got all the small things to finish editing and uh, I'll have some more stuff uh, filmed in the next few days. Right. See you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.